Okay. 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 I was wrong about the Xbox Series S because, I mean, when this thing was originally announced, a lot of people, including myself, thought this was just a worthless cash grab by Microsoft. It was a way to hook you in and just get you to buy digital games so they'd make the most profit available. And they just had this little thing for people that couldn't afford the Xbox Series X without saving up a little more taking advantage of people that don't understand the difference between the two. But you know what? Now that I've been playing with this thing for a little bit over a month, I like it a lot. I really do. I am shocked by how much I like this system. Now, 300 bucks, a little bit too much still. I'm still going to stick with that. $300 is a little bit too much. But this thing is constantly going on sale for $250. So if you take the controller and value that at about 50 bucks, which I mean it is when it goes on sale, this is a $200 system. And for 200 bucks, this thing is a powerhouse. I mean, you can play all the games that are in the Series X on this system. Now, of course, there are graphical downgrades. Some games don't run as well, but for the vast majority of games that I've played, I haven't seen a massive difference between the two systems. And that just absolutely shocked me. This is coming from somebody who made fun of this system relentlessly because I just kept thinking of the Xbox One S All Digital Edition, which we all called the Xbox One Sad, because it was. The price difference wasn't nearly as dramatic. If we look at this as a $200 system, I mean, that's close to $250, $300 cheaper than the Xbox Series X. That's a phenomenal value for people who can't get the Xbox Series X still or can't afford it yet. And the thing is, it's crazy that you still can't get the Xbox Series X. It's still not readily available. You still have to hope that you get lucky, you find it in stores, just sit on the shelf, or you find it online for the few minutes that it's actually up. And that really does factor into why I do recommend this system now on sale because this is readily available and it goes on sale so often. Even if you can't find it for 250, it constantly goes for about 270 and includes a bunch of Fortnite stuff if you're playing that or Rocket League stuff. But if you can find this for 250, I mean, honestly, when it comes to the Xbox system, I don't really buy a whole lot of games for it because of how much is offered in Game Pass and how much of a great value Game Pass is. So as long as Game Pass stays the wonderful value that it is right now and it never shoots up in price or loses a ton of its library, this system is going to continue to be a great value for people who either want a cheap system and can't find a Series X or want a secondary system. Because that's the thing about the Xbox Series S. Look at how tiny this thing is. I mean, let's grab... This is going to be sacrilege, I'm sorry. Let's grab an, a PlayStation 5 controller because I didn't think to have an Xbox One or Xbox Series controller near me. Look at the size of the controller compared to the system. Look at how thin this thing is. It's, it's absurd. It is absolutely absurd how small this thing is, how pretty light this thing is. I mean, it makes it a great system to take on the go. And in fact, I did that recently in a work trip. I brought this to a hotel and plugged it in. And just like that, I can play Xbox Series games and watch Netflix and everything else on the go incredibly easily. If you really do want something in another room that plays your console games pretty damn close to the fidelity that the Xbox Series X does, this is the way to go. Now, there are a couple caveats because we're still very early in the Xbox Series life cycle. And we saw this with the Xbox One original how the Xbox One, over time, those games got more and more advanced and they started to struggle more and more in the system. We're talking load times going up, we're talking about frame rates dipping, and overall the system just desperately trying to keep up with the modern visuals. The Xbox Series X, I feel, is pretty future-proof because most of the games don't take advantage of the full power of the system right now, but this little guy will probably start to suffer over time. But honestly, with that caveat in mind, if you're okay with that, for $250, or if you if you don't want to count the controller, $200 for this system is an absolute 
steal of a way to get into modern day gaming because it's no longer next gen but to get into current gen consoles right now it's either you win the lottery or you just pick up one of these guys plus this system it lets you emulate a bunch of things yeah that's right if you buy something on the microsoft store that lets you get into the dev side of things you can emulate a ton of different consoles on this system adding even more value and making this system even more fun. So not only are you getting a semi-portable Xbox machine, but you're also getting a semi-portable emulator. And that's pretty cool. Now again, I do want to talk about the fact that there are differences between games. I know I said a lot of the games I played didn't really have that much of a difference. I'm talking about Hitman, not a huge difference. I know it's not really a next-gen game, but still, I'm gonna talk about it anyway, Skyrim the special anniversary edition, whatever. I played on the Series X, played on this, virtually no difference. The main games I had a big difference with were the games that were really taking advantage of at least a portion of the Series X's power, and that's Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5. Both of those games, you do see a pretty big difference in quality, especially Halo Infinite. I mean, I kept having frame rate drops, but in Forza, you do get a visual downgrade but in performance mode you're still getting like a solid 60 frames per second just not as high of a fidelity as i would have liked but again that's not bad for a 200 dollars console show me a 200 dollars system out there that can play these games at the level that this can you just can't do it you you especially can't build a computer right now with all the crazy pricing which is thankfully coming down but still it's really crazy to see a console with this much power at this price point. But again, I must stress, before I just sing the praises of this system too much, the real value of this system is heavily dependent on keeping Xbox Game Pass a good value. If Xbox Game Pass just randomly skyrockets, loses its library, I know I've said this already, but I need to stress this point. If Game Pass dies, the value of this kind of tanks with it because that's what I'm playing with this. That's what I'm playing mostly on my Xbox Series X even is Game Pass. But if Game Pass ever did fail, I still have that disk drive on that system and I can start buying discs again and I can play all my old Xbox One games. You can't play your old Xbox One games with this, but if you're really not doing that anyway and you're just playing Game Pass again, this is where it's at. But we haven't really heard anything bad about Game Pass coming over the horizon. We're seeing Microsoft trying to buy more companies and get more games onto its service. So it's only looking like a brighter future for it, which means a brighter future for this system. So I was wrong. And I'm sorry that I judged this so quickly, but honestly, until I finally got my hands on it, I mean, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell that it was going to be this good of a value. I couldn't tell that sometimes I forget that I've left this plugged in instead of my Xbox Series X when I go to play Hitman or something like that. And I'm just playing it and I look and I'm like, oh my God, I'm playing on my Series S instead of the X, what am I doing? And sometimes I've been too lazy to unplug the Series S to plug in the Series X. I mean, for certain games, like I said, it just does not matter or at least it doesn't matter enough to me to actually notice a difference. Now, if you have like the highest fidelity setup out there, you have like a $2,000 TV, there's probably gonna be more of a difference, but my setup is gonna be what most people have, I'm sure. A budget 4K TV and a sound bar. I feel like most people probably have that setup and that's what I have. So I feel like for the majority of people, recommending this system for that cheap price of 250 still applies to most people. Let me know what you guys think down below about the Xbox Series S, if you agree with me or if you think my initial take on it was correct. Like the video if you guys liked it, subscribe for more content, and as always, have a fantastic day. See you everybody.